Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions around cybersecurity, information security, and people with all different sort of experience, beginner level, couple of years in the industry, uh, bachelor's degree and master's have been asking for different questions around uh, career or transition or starting a new career in cybersecurity. I'm going to share something to those uh, areas. Uh, which will help you understand uh, where these controls come from, from and how does it work? What are the overlapping steps? Usually what happens when you want to become a uh, career start in cybersecurity or you wanted to start in um, you know any of these, basically uh, you're talking about uh, offensive security, defensive, red team, blue team, right? So, and the mindset is around, okay, is something hacking or some of these kind of skills you have to learn or maybe you're trying to protect the websites, uh, app and all that. Yeah, that's true. This is the area. And also people ask, okay, tell us something which does not require a lot of programming. So that's true also. But this is uh, usually a, is a perception about uh, cybersecurity in the market and when people talk about it. So what is different? I mean, why is there a huge demand? And what are the skill sets? I mean, this is not limited to for you to learn some uh, tools, offensive tools, or penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, and all that. There's a lot more than that. And that's why there are new jo job roles available, you know, like security engineer or cloud security engineer did not exist before. Uh, there are roles about uh, information security analyst. Uh, there are roles uh, you may have even know about from security operations center. So there is a room for everyone. So I'll walk you through some of them, where it's basically coming from. In cybersecurity, uh, there is a room or there is a job for everyone, whether you're coming from database background or you're being a Linux or a system administrator, uh, you are a web developer, uh, depending where your background is, or maybe you are starting a brand new career, or maybe uh, you are in the industry as a network engineer for five, 10 years, right? So there is a career growth, career path for everyone. Or well, one of the thing I would say you have to learn is where these needs are coming from. So these are coming from uh, different business requirements and they want to be secure, they want to be compliant. So I'm not going to cover the compliance piece today. However, I'm going to cover where these requirements are coming from and uh, what are the gen general or um, you know uh, framework or process with these companies to follow because there's a requirement separate for health industry, which is HIPAA, maybe a fair payment card industry, which is PIDSS, PCIDSS. Uh, and there are so many different frameworks available depending uh, which industry you come from, maybe retail or finance, banking and all that. So let me share my screen and then we'll dig into that and see uh, how much uh, we can learn in this video. So what I have uh, here on the screen is from the NIST cybersecurity framework. So if you're not familiar with this, hold on, let the video finish and then go to the NIST.gov and cyber framework. As you can see, it's freely available. You can go install the kingdom to that. And you can see this is a huge, huge list, right? Of the framework and everything. And it literally can take you uh, not hours, not days, but maybe a, um, a year, depending, right? So basically for this thing, you have to framework version 1.1. Uh, you have to uh, understand all these things. These are not just basic five pillars. Basically, uh, it's a lot of depth in that, you know, and the framework is designed on these, on these principles, which is called CSF. And no matter what industry do you belong to, it can be applicable. And then for that specific uh, industry, then you'll have to add more on that. But if you work for an employer or a company or you just starting learning, this is the best way to start learning. However, this is more of a information security piece. Uh, cybersecurity, more of a, a control where you have to go and apply those controls, basically. But uh, this is where the requirements come from. And this is how you make sure those controls and policy and procedures are implemented. So basically, when we talk about, we have this identify, what are you going to identify, basically? What does it mean, right, if you look at it right now? So we're talking about identifying all the infrastructure pieces, the devices, and everything in your IT infrastructure. Uh, and then once you have that list fully thoroughly understood, then you have to work on something which is called protect. How are you going to protect that, right? There could be so many areas or mechanism to protect. Like you can have multi-factor authentication. Um, you can have um, uh, encryption. Uh, and there are physical security protection method applies in the data center, right? So these are the things. 
So when you have this thing, once you identify it and you have a process, how are you going to protect that? But there is something called detection. How do you get to know something going wrong or bad in your environment or something on a physical data center? How are you going to detect that? So you, you may have seen those CCTV cameras, right? So this is one of those detective mechanisms uh, which is coming from here, you know, so you identify, you protect, and then what do you do basically for detection, right? Uh, again, when you're detecting it, uh, uh, again, it, where the SOC security operations center, where they have a dashboard and logging and monitoring, right? In in in, in terms of IT, you got to have a, a logging and a monitoring here, right? So this is where it's coming from, from this framework. And uh, this is not only the framework, and um, there are, uh, two, three, also different framework available, depending, but I'm talking specifically in US, but you have ISO 27001 and two framework available. We have other frameworks available also in Europe. So depending which country uh, also, and where is most uh, acceptable framework, but as long as if you are here in US, so uh, this is what you need to basically follow and apply based on the framework. And then once you have the detection, then how you want to do the response, right? Which is, this is where if something, you see something not right, how are you going to respond to that, right? Uh, this is again, uh, where your uh, controls and your response action plan or incident response comes in. So this is itself is another area where uh, you guys have been asking, how do we start a career in the cybersecurity and all that? So basically when you want to work for uh, some of these roles like uh, threat intelligence and all this, how are you going to respond to that? So you may end up uh, working in that area as well. So this is one of the areas, right? So uh, respond, how are you going to respond to that? And recovery is pretty much all about, uh, we are talking here about BCDR, business continuity and disaster recovery. And something goes wrong, something goes bad with your data, with your information, everything. Do you have a plan to recover from that? Do you have a plan uh, for the business continuity? How do you gonna do that? So this is all things coming from the framework, but when it's come to cloud security or whichever, so I'll be talking specifically cloud, and if you're using a GCP or Microsoft Azure or AWS, so this is where the tools you will use, which can give you uh, the things you need based on this framework. I hope this is helpful, kind of give an idea. Maybe in the future videos, I'll dig more into these and give you more details around that. If you like it, let me know. And also let me know if you're familiar with this framework and if you're using it, how your experience, do you like it or not? What other specific industry do you belong to or what other industry framework do you use? So stay tuned, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.